So we're moving on in our quest towards enlightenment. And we went through my Rebbe's Sefer, it was called Da et Gulatecha, getting to know your personal redemption. And now we're going to learn his fundamental Sefer before his most fundamental Sefer. And that's called Getting to Know Yourself. Da et Atzmecha. This is the English. This is the Hebrew. The Hebrew actually happens to be a lot longer and better, I think. But it's a pretty good, decent English translation. So I think you should have a copy. It's very important for you to have this book. Getting to Know Yourself. And we really spoke about this yesterday, that what is yourself? What, what, how do you identify yourself? So we said there's something called Chavaya, which is your innermost point. Your innermost, your innermost point of consciousness. The inner, 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 innermost point of who you are. So when you say, Meir, something happened to you when you were eight years old. And it was very wonderful. You were on the beach or you were playing sports. So it's a nice memory, yeah? Yeah, sure. Who, whose memory is that? Whose memory is that? You have a memory in your head. Who's, whose memory is that? Is the memory you? Is the memory you? No, it's your memory. Who, are, who is that? Your mind memory. Who's my mind? When you say my mind, who's the mind? Whose mind is it? Who's you? No, no, no. How about this? Let's say that little boy playing football on the beach. Yeah. That was you? But as a younger age, you had a smaller body, different had world view, but it was still you. Yeah. Or was it a different person completely? Or it was, it was you. You just had a different level of intelligence, different emotional things, different life experience, different memories, different dreams, different desires. But it was still you. That was you. It's not a, in fact, to show a picture, you say, this is me. Yeah. When I was a kid. You don't say, this is someone else. Okay. You say, that is me. So there was a you that was then when you were six, and then when you're sixteen, and when you're uh, it's the same you. Yeah. Just had different stuff. Yeah? Yes. Yeah? You with that? You fair? Asha, is that okay? You with that? Whose phone is that, Asha? Hashem. Oh, yeah? It's so Hashem says, put it down. Don't use my phone. Hashem doesn't have <laughs> Say I exist. Who 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 exists? When you say I, what do you mean? We're getting trippy here. I like it. This is like psychic. This is called psychedelic Torah. The Rabbi Dekber. No. Sit in a class of Rabbi Dekber. Your your like morsel of the collective consciousness. <laughs> is the I. I. Now you see, thoughts come and go. Thoughts come and go and they change. Emotions come and go and they change. That can't be who you are. If we say you, this is a picture of me when I was six, and it's me now, so there's the same you. It's an unchanging, constant consciousness behind everything. Now your thoughts and feelings and everything, they're changing all the time. That's not you. You're not changing all the time. You're a consistent... It's being projected onto the consciousness. Basically, there's a blank screen. And all the time, things are being projected onto the blank screen. Things you see, stimulus from the outside world, then internal stuff, thoughts are coming through that blank screen, being projected. So most people, just because we've got projections onto that screen the whole time, we never experience the blank screen. Now, at the end of the movie, once the projector's turned off, the blank screen is still there. The movie, everything's moving all the time, and it's coming, and, it, and there's a beginning, and there's an end, and there's different colors and different stuff, everything's going on, da, 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 and it's all being projected onto the blank screen. That blank screen is consciousness. But because we never stop constant projection, and intake, and bombarding our five senses with sensory intake, we never get to experience what is all being projected onto. What are all, who's experiencing your experiences? 
Man, who's experiencing experiences? Say me. What do you mean when you say me? Yeah. My blank screen. Your blank screen. So Judaism teaches there's a, something called a neshama. It's a soul. That's that's who you are. Is that what is experiencing things? Myself? Yes, but there is one layer in between. It's really your ego. So there is one obstacle which is everything you experience, it goes through something called your ego and now your ego has been built up both by your past experiences and your nature and, and, thing, and nurture and things. So when you experience something, you have this higher level of you which is judging it. I don't like that. That goes against what I want. I get angry. I, get that. I have desires. Or all of that. So there is that level of you who is kind of looking at and judging all your experiences. But then there's a higher level beyond that, which is not just your, your neshama never felt any pain. No one could cause pain to your neshama. No one said. Yes, it has the pain of I'm being let down here, but it doesn't have like you insulted me type of pain. But it has it has a yearning for Hashem, and it it does feel something when we're not living along. But it in itself is. How would you uh, add that into the projector of my screen and object? What would your ego be? What would you be now? The guy sitting in the audience watching. But it's not going through him. No, but he's judging. He's not no, but okay. he's judging everything that's happening on the screen. It's like oh, I don't like that scene. I would have played that much better. I wish that happened next. She's not very good looking in that minute. He's the judge of everything. But then there's even a higher level that's beyond that. So what would you say is more real? Spiritual or physical? Spiritual. Yeah, did you say that, really? Have you ever experienced actual, as a reality, your soul, or anything spiritual? And I don't mean I got stoned on the beach and did some yoga at sunrise. Have you actually had a spiritual, an actual experience beyond thought and... Do you believe you, there is actually a, an entity, a reality, called a soul? Or is it just a nice idea? It is a nice idea. Nasha? We talk about it the whole time. I mean, something changes between the living and the dead. So you're saying that, that is, there's a living person and he's lying down and he's alive and then the next point he's dead. Now until before he starts rotting, for at least 20 minutes after he's dead, he's still warm and mushy and he's still got legs and a heart and he's still got a brain. So what's the difference between a newly dead person and a living person? No pulse. Okay, so you're not going to pass, but you still got blood in there, basically. So what's the difference? So Ariel wants to say, the souls, the, the life force is gone. The ruach. The ruach. It's really, in this case, the nefesh. The life force is gone. What's keeping you alive right now? Food in my body and the water. No, but if I put food in a dead person's body, it wouldn't keep him alive. Because he's already dead. Yeah, but it doesn't. It means if food is what's keeping you alive, then I could put food into a dead person and it would be alive. Then. But he has to be alive. What's make? What? How do you define that alive? He hasn't died. What makes him alive? His, his uh, heart is pumping. What's making his heart pump? <laughs> the natural his way brain. Is, is his brain. What's keeping his brain alive? Exactly. So I'm telling you that Judaism teaches that the spiritual world is more real than the physical world. The spiritual world is more real than the physical world. Now we've said this before that quantum physics now has proved that that physicality, material matter is just energy vibrating at a very high level. 
the table, this table and your hand. What's the difference between them in terms of elements and things? And material. In terms of material, what's the difference between the table and your hand? Let's say I cut your hand off. So I put your hand on the table. What's the difference between the table and your hands? One thing is, the table's made of wood, and your hand's made of flesh and bone. Now what's wood made of? Oh. What's wood made of, and what's flesh made of, and what's metal made of, and what's grass made of? And what are they made of? Everything is made of cells. What are the cells made of? Atoms. What are atoms made of? Protons, neutrons, and electrons. What are protons, neutrons, and electrons made of? So look, this is where we get into quantum physics, which I love it. Basically, if you just break it down, the substance of everything, of your hand and the table, is exactly the same thing. Your hand is made of exactly the same thing that the table is. That's cool. There is only one thing. It's just vibrating in a different way. There is only one thing. It's just manifest in many different forms, based on how it's vibrating. There's just one. There's only one thing. When you break it down. Break it down. Break it down. Fine. Break it down. So what is energy? If everything is energy, do you know what scientists say energy is? They don't know. No one knows what energy is. They know it exists, they can see it, but they have no idea what it is, and it changes. Sometimes it's a wave, sometimes it's... If people can look this up for me, that would be great. Type in, what is energy? Energy is what small children and cats and kittens and puppies and animals feel when they're around their hands. I know that it makes sense. One day, I feel like it's maybe energy is best defined as the language of light. Wow. Like that, what is light? Yeah. So, the first thing that comes up is the quantity of quantitative property that must be transferred to a body or physical system to perform work on the body or to heat it. What is that? Quantitative okay, fine. Anyway, so I get, this is what you does in you. You have a spiritual part of you, which is actually your essence, and it's more real and permanent, is it's eternal. It's more real and permanent than your body. That's it. That's what we say the soul is. It's your essence. It, it existed before you were born, and it exists now, somewhat within your body. And when the body dies, it's going to carry on existing. It exists always, as a real entity. It's a real thing. Pretty cool, Yash. Now this inner world, we want to try and tap into the inner, inner world, tap into the matrix. Can you see through the matrix? We're like, we've got to realize this whole universe is just a virtual reality projection of God's will. That's what we believe. So we've got to try and see through the matrix. And we've got to tap into our inner place as well. And try and manifest that. And if you could live through that place, it's very powerful. You know, the, have you seen the matrix? Seen the matrix? It's worth seeing. So the matrix, basically, they get taken out of existence as we know it, and they've shown that it's all virtual reality, but there's this one evil guy, and he goes back into the matrix, and he goes, I know this burger is not real, but it tastes so good, or something like that. He like, eats it. I know this. So he's deluding himself. So what, we want, what we're trying to do is we're trying to become enlightened. Oh, this is what it means to be enlightened. If energy is like the language of light, then we have to become enlightened. We have to become light beings. We've got to be beings of light, where we're just manifesting Hashem's light in the world. Because we really say that everything, the Kabbalists say, long before quantum physics, that everything is just a manifestation of God's light. 
Yeah, yeah of God's and or in self. Or in self that is filtered down and it's gone through so many filters that it's become a physical reality which is just a representation of a spirit the spiritual reality. Hi. Is frequency of energy the same as the vibration of it? I don't know. Well, the vibra frequency is how fast it's vibrating. Vibration is a movement. Frequency is the speed of movement. Right, I'm going to say, let's say somebody can have low vibration but a high frequency. And high frequency, but low, I mean high, low, high vibration but a low frequency. Maybe. But we want to have high frequency, high vibrations. Right. And you can see some people are just walking around with a lot more vitality. Most people are just walking around. Some people have immense vitality. One of my rabbis, Rav, Rav Chaimowitz, is quite older now, and he's got a big white beard, and but his face is like a baby, shining. It's amazing. It's like, and you see lots of the tzaddikim are like that. Their faces are shining a bit. And it actually says in the Torah, Moshe Rabbeinu had to wear a mask because he was just sh his face was just shining. That's where they get the whole. Jews have horns, things from. Because it's karnaim in the Torah. Karnaim means e either rays of light or horns. So I think Michelangelo drew Moshe with horns. Well, where did the nap come from? Huh? The nap. They say Jews have a tail. Oh. Yeah. Are you sure he wasn't wearing a mask? Is there a flow of pandemic? Yeah. Because he had a shiny face. So what we want to do is we want to become enlightened. We want to tap into that part of us that is just pure light. We want to shine through that. And then life becomes so good. It just becomes like trying to find the other light and bring light to other people. Once you've really tapped into your light, you don't need anything. You don't get your vitality from external things at all. You get all of your vitality from your internal light. You're saying it's important to radiate after you acknowledge it. Well, once you can tap into it, then it's hard not to radiate it, I think. It just comes out and radiates. Ah, uh, this book, hopefully, we're going to try and tap into that. What's it called again? It's called Getting to Know Yourself. And when it says yourself, do you know what that means? Not your pain and your memories and your upbringing. That's not yourself. Those are things that happen to you. Who did they happen to? Who? <laughs> Who? It happened to say, I hear that. It happened to your ego. Whose ego? Your ego is given to you, but it's not you. Even your ego isn't you. That's why we talk about being mabatel, my ego. Bittal adds me, it really means mabatling my ego. And then the higher level of that is once I've mabatled my ego and I'm, I'm the shama, and the uh, battle adds me as neshama into Hashem. Basically, your ego is your the persona created by your yezara. That's what your ego, and we know that because that's what the snake made Chava do. She, the snake, created Chava's ego, seeing as it being a sense of self separate from Hashem, separate from neshama, and then ego came. That was the fall of mankind when ego was produced. Separation. Ego is separation from Hashem. Ego stands for edging God out. Ego is the persona created by your Yetzara. It's your sense of self disconnected from your soul. It's your sense of self which isn't uh, identified as the reality of your essential self. And your ego has needs. You have to build your ego. It has needs. It needs to be respected, and it needs, it needs honor, and it needs power, and it needs love, and it needs all these things. That's your ego needs those things. Your true essence, your neshama, doesn't need. It, your whole neshama. We say you, you're only half a neshama. So in a way, that neshama needs this other half of the neshama. Um, but it doesn't have honor needs and ego needs and what your neshama really wants is just shlemus he's actually going to talk about that
just wants wholeness, perfection, which it does have in itself, but once it's in this world, it's been so taken away, it's so disconnected from Shlemus that it just wants to get back. Bala Tanya talks about it a lot, about the flame, the flame wants to jump off the wick, go back to Hashem. The flame is like... Most people have had decades of Their whole life. So the very first step is to just recognize the reality. Just recognize that it is there. That's it. And then to start it. And he's going to give us some practical tools to do it. So he says we're basically like blind people. Imagine there's a blind person. He's in this room. And he doesn't believe that there's a table in front of him. There's a table. And he's blind. And everyone's like, no, there's a table there. And he's like, I can't see it. And there's no table. He says, we're blind to our soul. Whether the blind person believes in that table or not, it is there. Even if he says, I don't believe it's there. It's like, okay, but it is there. You're blind to your soul. We're blind to our souls because we don't have the faculty to, in order to perceive it. But we're going to open up, we've got to open up our spiritual eyes to tap into our faculty of being able to see our soul. And that what we would then want to try and do is not just acknowledge that there is soul, but actually get into a space where that is who we identify as. That is me. I am soul. I don't have a soul. I am a soul. And I have a body. And I have an ego. And I have thoughts. And I have a Yetzirah. And I have issues. And I have stuff. And I have a... But those aren't me. I am soul. And souls come down for a hundred years into this world, and I, all, and the purpose is to we've fallen out of soul identification into body identification, ego psyche identification. Our task in this world is to reconnect into soul identification. And by the way, that's only a step, because the real step is to connect to Hashem. But body ego can't connect to Hashem. You can a bit, you know, my emotions a bit, but. Really, to connect to Hashem is you got to be a, a soul because Hashem is a spiritual entity, and only spiritual can really connect with spiritual. So I mean, as soon as you can start identifying as a spiritual being, then you can start connecting to Hashem properly. So your mincha, if you can really get into a soul space before you step into mincha, your mincha is very different. So, and by the way, if you're really in a soul space for mincha, then of course you're not davening for your, all your ego needs and your physical needs. So I don't need that. His body is different. His body is as you can speak from that place. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to not be blind anymore. We don't want to be blind. Now, I did this thought experiment the other day. I want to do it again. What defines you more? Your body or your thoughts? If you're going to date a girl, obviously you'd like her to have a good body too. But let's say you can only know, you want to make a decision about marrying this girl. You've got a choice. You can know everything about her body or everything about her thoughts. Which one would you want to know which one to make your decision? Body. Yeah, right. <laughs> body. No doubt. <laughs> I don't care what you think. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So the right answer is thoughts. Why? Find you more than your body. Yes? Yes. So the Baal Shem Tov, and many people, the Rambam says as well, that you are where your thoughts are. You are... And that makes sense, by the way, because if your thoughts define you more than your body defines you, then, sh- then you are where your thoughts are rather than where your body are. Does that, that's just a very rational, logical statement. If your thoughts define you more than your body, then you are, you are more where your thoughts are than where your body is. You hear that? Very logical. So watch this. Close your eyes and think about being in Sfat or somewhere. So look, you're walking, you're sitting somewhere in Sfat, it's beautiful. Okay, where are you? <laughs> where I am, I'm on the edge of the mountain right by the Ari Nicholas, because I actually can't go I know exactly yeah. in Sfat. <laughs> Just no, the, so the truth is, everyone who even knows this, it's very hard for them to say, I'm in Sfat. Because they're like, I'm not really, I get what, I get what you're trying to say, because Rabbi. Because identify with the body more. Yeah, because you completely identify with it. And me too, I'm not saying I'm, uh, but you're saying, I, I understand what you're saying, Rabbi, it makes sense. 
but really I am here. I'm just thinking about being in Sfat, but I'm here. Is that if someone wanted to find me, where would they have to go? <laughs> they wouldn't have to go, they wouldn't go to Sfat. Hi, where's Dove Well, he's in Sfat. So they go to Sfat and they go, you lied to me, he's in Lovely Gosh. Yeah. It shows how immensely and, and culturally trapped we are in body identity. But you're not your body. And by the way, you're not even your thoughts, but you're more your thoughts. Now your soul, your soul is really everywhere. Your soul is eternal and infinite. So you're everywhere. So you can say, I'm in the classroom and in, in the spa. So this is called Dog Bear's Trippy Half Hour. <laughs> psychedelic Tyler. So we're going to try and tap into psychedelic God consciousness. Wow.